Starship explodes in a brilliant display that SpaceX's Elon Musk called entertainment guaranteed. Let's talk about what happened and how the new space race is a lot different than the old one. Hi, I'm Dan Milliken. When Starship exploded on January 16th and the tower successfully caught the super heavy booster, and at the same time that Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin hit a launch milestone, I started thinking about how we truly do have a new space race. We're gonna take a look at the Starship 7 destruction and the new Glenn launch from January 16th, 2025 in this report, but I also wanna talk about this new space race environment that has developed. Starting in the midst of the Cold War, we had a space race. The US and the Soviet Union battled to one-up each other to explore, to discover the final frontier, to launch the first satellite, to be the first in space, the first to orbit, the first man on the moon. It was a race of ideologies where milestones and victories somehow proved that one government was superior to the other. But as that chilled with the collapse of the Soviet Union, it's taken a couple of decades, but there's a new space race, not necessarily between countries or between which government is better, but between corporate competitors driven by commercial interest, driven by scientific exploration, and in Elon Musk's desire to land and colonize other planets. The old space race was a sprint, all about being first. This new race is a marathon, not about being first, but going further, staying longer, and doing more. This is the new space race. So let's look at the most recent spectacular failure in this new space race. On January 16, 2025, SpaceX conducted its seventh Starship test flight from Starbase in Boca Chica, Texas. The mission showcased a significant achievement as the Super Heavy booster was successfully caught by the launch tower's chopstick arms upon its return and marks the second time SpaceX has successfully retrieved the giant 226-foot booster. The last attempt was diverted due to an anomaly with the tower, and that booster landed softly in the Gulf of Mexico and then exploded. I guess when you have a huge rocket booster falling from the sky, softly is a relative term. However, this mission faced a setback when the Starship spacecraft intended to deploy 10 Starlink simulators, that's fake satellites for the test. The spacecraft experienced engine anomalies during the ascent. Communication was lost approximately eight and a half minutes into the flight, shortly after the engines began shutting down sequentially. The telemetry was lost after showing the spacecraft had reached an altitude of about 145 kilometers and was traveling at roughly 13,245 miles an hour. Subsequent reports and video indicate that the spacecraft broke apart over the Turks and Caicos Islands. And man, was it incredible. Even a flight crew from the cockpit of an airliner got some video. This flight, like several previously, saw SpaceX remove certain heat tiles for testing to stress the spacecraft during reentry. However, this does not appear to be the cause as this was on the ascent. Spacecraft go through a phase called the Maximum Dynamic Pressure, or Max-Q, and the breakup of the spacecraft was well after this phase of flight. According to Elon Musk, the preliminary indication is that we had an oxygen fuel leak in the cavity above the ship engine firewall that was large enough to build pressure in excess of the vent capacity. Apart from obvious double checking for leaks, we will add fire suppression to that volume and probably increase the vent area. Nothing so far suggests pushing next launch past next month. Musk also went on on X to say after the rapid unscheduled assembly, success is uncertain, but entertainment is guaranteed. Despite the loss of Starship spacecraft, the successful recovery of the Super Heavy booster marks a critical step forward in SpaceX's pursuit of fully reusable rocket technology. The company plans to analyze the flight data to address the issues encountered and apply necessary improvements for future missions. This is the third time SpaceX has lost its Starship spacecraft. The first launch ended with the vehicle losing control and being destroyed mid-flight and the second was destroyed after encountering engine anomalies during the ascent phase. 
More recently, before this failure, SpaceX had successfully landed their Starship spacecraft in what they called a soft splashdown in the Indian Ocean. The FAA stated they activated a debris response area and briefly slowed aircraft outside the area where space vehicle debris was falling or stopped aircraft at their departure location and that several aircraft requested to divert due to low fuel levels while holding outside impacted areas. The FAA is requiring an investigation into the launch and will work with SpaceX to investigate the cause of this accident. This might halt any future Starship launches until the investigation is completed, but uh, Elon Musk doesn't think it'll delay SpaceX. In fact, SpaceX has applied for permission to launch up to 25 mega rockets from Starbase in 2025. Those who have kept a close eye on this program know this is not the first time the FAA has required an investigation into a Starship mishap. In the past, these investigations lasted months, preventing further vehicle testing until they got through that. This test was not the only test to occur on January 16th. Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin launched their New Glenn rocket earlier that morning. At 2.03 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, New Glenn embarked on its maiden voyage from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. The towering 32-story rocket successfully reached orbit, deploying the Blue Ring Pathfinder prototype satellite into medium Earth orbit. Despite the mission's primary success, the reusable first stage booster, humorously nicknamed, so you're telling me there's a chance, failed to achieve a soft landing on the drone ship Jacqueline in the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, maybe they should have just named it success. Telemetry data indicated that the booster was traveling at approximately Mach 5.5 and an altitude of 84,226 feet before it was lost. This inaugural flight marks a significant milestone for Blue Origin, positioning the company as a formidable competitor in the orbital space launch industry, which has been predominantly led by SpaceX. The New Glenn rocket is designed to transport various payloads, including satellites for Amazon's Project Kuiper, their answer to Starlink, and NASA's Blue Moon Lunar Lander. While the booster landing failure presents a challenge, such setbacks are not uncommon in the aerospace industry. Blue Origin CEO Dave Limp expressed pride in the orbital achievement and acknowledged the need for improvements in booster recovery for future missions. I appreciate his and I appreciate Musk's perspective that failure isn't failure. Every step is purposeful and leads to the next step. It takes a different mindset than one focused on short-term results or public optics. He definitely is focused on the long play here, and he's not alone in this new space race. Today's race isn't just about flags on a moon. It's about establishing a human presence beyond Earth. It's about mining asteroids or even colonizing Mars. Here are the key players in this new space race. SpaceX, founded by Elon Musk with ambitions for Mars. They have pioneered reusable rockets that drastically cut costs like the Falcon 9 and the Falcon Heavy. They're also known for the Starlink project for global internet coverage. In 2024, SpaceX had almost 100 launches. Then there's Blue Origin, founded in 2000 by Jeff Bezos of Amazon, his vision for a sustainable human spaceflight. They started more on the space tourism focus, but they've moved towards other commercial possibilities. Uh, they are known for the New Glenn rocket and the Blue Moon Lunar Lander project. And while Musk dreams of Mars, Bezos dreams of Orbital Reef, a space station built as a commercial destination. I'd book a room at that Airbnb in a heartbeat. And then you have Boeing. They're basically all about the ISS, the space station, and the Starliner. But as reported here last fall on taking off, Boeing has had a bunch of problems. Operating far less efficient than SpaceX and Blue Origins, Boeing is beset with quality issues, cost overruns, and delays that move from months to years. And they've taken the lion's share of the U.S. government contract money with the lowest results. And that has led to rumors that Boeing may divest itself of its space operations at some point in the near future. Other corporate players include uh, Virgin Galactic that's focused on space tourism and Rocket Lab based in New Zealand. There still is the ideological race with national efforts to get into the space race by China with its own space station and lunar missions. India is working towards a Mars mission and Japan has been performing some lunar missions and those are some of the key players in the new space race. 
All right, I want to talk about failure for a moment. We touched on it briefly, but let's come back to it. In my own life, I've had a pretty big recent failure, and I'm going to make a video on it soon, and I'll post it. Maybe that's why this Starship 7 flight is so intriguing to me. When you look at Musk's view of failure, it, it blows my mind. He pushes an iterative process where failure is not only expected, but is considered e essential for learning. Me, when I fail, I'm waiting for the hammer to fall, to, to be penalized for my failure. So I avoid that at all costs, even deflect or point fingers at other people. Or take the government, for instance. You, nobody bats a thousand, but w whether you've got a mayor or a governor or president, you're, you're not going to be perfect every time. You're going to have failures. But when was the last time they take the failure, they take the data and say, look, we might have missed the mark here, so we're going to, to learn, adapt, and, and move on. No, it's usually blaming others like what I've done. But when I look at failure as essential for learning, it changes everything for me. Fear of failure goes away. I know it sounds right now like I'm a Musk cheerleader, but love him or hate him, the guy's getting historical things done. You can't argue with that. Now, can you imagine working in an environment where you don't have to fear failure? If your boss, your client, or whoever you answered to simply took the data from the failure and moved forward in full transparency, like I said before, it, it changes everything. I hope that some of this culture rubs off on more people and organizations and governments. I mean, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I usually read most, if not all of them. And I really think this new space race is a great thing. No longer exclusively dependent on government programs, the healthy competition between SpaceX, Blue Origin, and all the others is leading to incredible innovation, increased safety, better quality, lower cost. I can't wait to see what this space race looks like in 10 years. Well, thanks for watching and thanks to our sponsors. Listen in the description below. Uh, with links like Flying Eyes Optics, the best glasses, look how thin these are, for under headsets and helmets. Use our discount code, taking off all caps, one word for 10% off. ClemensInsurance.net, Jerry there, saved me a lot of money on my insurance. And two companies also doing incredible innovation, 67 designs, they have mounts that are made in the US for your car, your boat, your plane, super high quality, I love these mounts and zvision.com, the brightest landing and taxi lights for your airplane. Thanks for watching and check out my in-depth report on the Boeing Starliner fail from this past fall right here. Remember, superior judgment trumps superior skills. Take care.